The Real Reason Why You Can't Kill the A-10 Warthog. Known for an ability to keep flying after taking multiple rounds of enemy machine gun fire, land and operate in rugged terrain, destroy groups of enemy fighters with a 30mm cannon, and unleash a wide arsenal of attack weapons, the A-10 is described by pilots as a flying tank in the sky. Able to hover over ground war and provide life-saving close air support in high-threat combat environments, it is built to withstand more damage than any other frame that I know of. A-10 pilot Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Hayden, 23rd Fighter Group Deputy, Moody Air Force Base, told Scout Warrior in an interview last year. The pilot of the A-10 is surrounded by multiple plates of titanium armor, designed to enable the aircraft to withstand small arms fire and keep flying its attack missions. The A-10 is not agile, nimble, fast, or quick, Hayden said. It's deliberate, measured, hefty, impactful, calculated, and sound. There's nothing flimsy or fragile about the way it is constructed or about the way it flies. A-10 Thunderbolt II, affectionately known as the Warthog, has been in service since the late 1970s and served as a close air support combat aircraft in conflicts such as the Gulf War, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Allied Force in Kosovo, among others. Having flown combat missions in the A-10, Hayden explained how the air aircraft is specially designed to survive enemy ground attacks. There are things built in for redundancy. If one hydraulic system fails, another one kicks in, he said. If the aircraft loses all of its electronics, including its digital displays and targeting systems, the pilot of an A-10 can still fly, drop general purpose bombs, and shoot the 30mm cannon, Hayden explained. So when I lose all the computers and the calculations, the targeting pod and the heads-up display, you can still point the aircraft using a degraded system at the target and shoot. We're actually trained for that, he said. Unlike other air platforms built for speed, maneuverability, air-to-air dogfighting, and air-to-air weapons, the A-10 is specifically engineered around its gun, a 30mm cannon aligned directly beneath the fuselage. The gun is also called a GAU 8A Gatling gun. The 30mm cannon has seven barrels. Barrels. They are centered the way the aircraft fires. The firing barrel goes right down the center line. You can point the aircraft and shoot at the ground. It is designed for air-to-ground attack, Hayden explained. Armed with 1,150 rounds, the 30mm cannon is able to fire 70 rounds a second. Hayden explained the gun alignment as being straight along the fuselage line without an upward cant like many other aircraft have. Also, the windows in the A-10 are also wider to allow pilots a larger field of view with which to see and attack targets. The engines of the A-10 are mounted high so that the aircraft can land in austere environments such as rugged, dirty, or sandy terrain, Hayden said. The engines on the A-10 are General Electric TF-34GE-100 turbofans. These aerodynamic configurations and engine technology allow the A-10 to fly slower and lower in close proximity to ground forces and enemy targets. The wings are straight and broadened. The engines are turbofan. They were selected and designed for their efficiency, not because of enormous thrust. We have a very efficient engine that allows me to loiter with a much more efficient gas burn rate, Hayden said. Close air support. By virtue of being able to fly at slower speeds of 300, the A-10 can fly beneath weather at altitudes of 100 feet. This gives pilots an ability to see enemy targets with the naked eye, giving them the ability to drop bombs, fire rockets, and open fire with a 30mm cannon in close proximity to friendly forces. The A-10 uses both lightning and sniper pods engineered with infrared and electro-optical sensors able to find targets for the pilot. The aircraft uses the same targeting pod as F-15E and F-16. However, most of the fighters can't transition between the two targeting pods, and we can, based on our software, Hayden said. The A-10 carries a full complement of weapons to include Joint Direct Attack Munitions or JDAM GPS-guided bombs. Its arsenal includes GBU-38s, GBU-31s, GBU-54s, Mark 82s, Mark 84s, AGM-65s, Maverick missiles, AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, and rockets along with illumination flares, jammer pods, and other protective countermeasures. The aircraft can carry 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance, eight can fly under the wings, and three under fuselage pylon stations, Air Force statements said. A-10 Avionics Technology Pilots flying attack missions in the aircraft communicate with other aircraft and ground forces using radios and a data link known as Link-16. Pilots can also text message with other aircraft and across platforms, Hayden added. 
The cockpit is engineered with what is called the CAS cockpit for common avionics architecture system, which includes moving digital map displays and various screens showing pertinent information such as altitude elevation, surrounding terrain, and target data. A-10 pilots also wear a high-tech helmet, which enables them to look at targeting video on a helmet display. I can project my targeting pod video into my eye so I can see the field of view. If something shoots at me, I can target it simply by looking at it, he explained. The future of the A-10. Following an announcement from Pentagon leaders that the A-10 will not begin retiring, but rather will serve until at least 2022, Air Force and Department of Defense officials are now hoping to keep a close air support aircraft for many years beyond the previously projected time frame. Given the emerging global threat environment, it would make sense that the Air Force would seek to preserve an aircraft such as the A-10. Having the requisite funds to support this would be of great value to the Air Force. Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark Welsh told lawmakers that despite the prior plan, the service did not want to retire the A-10. Prior plans to retire the fleet of A-10s were purely budget-driven, senior Air Force leaders have consistently said. I don't want to retire it, Welsh told a congressional committee in early March of last year. Now, the Air Force is keeping it. Air Force leaders had previously said that the emerging multi-role F-35 would be able to pick up the close air support mission. With its sensor technology, 25mm gun, and maneuverability, there's little question about whether the F-35 could succeed with these kind of missions. At the same time, there is also consensus that the A-10 provides an extremely unique set of battlefield attributes which need to be preserved for decades. Many lawmakers, observers, veterans, analysts, pilots, and members of the military have been following the unfolding developments regarding the Air Force's plan for the A-10. Citing budgetary reasons, Air Force leaders had said they plan to begin retiring its fleet of A-10s as soon as this year. Some Air Force personnel maintain that other air assets such as the F-16 and emerging F-35 multi-role stealth fighter would be able to fill the mission gap and perform close air support missions once the A-10 retired. Now the Air Force has begun a three-pronged strategy to replace or sustain the A-10, which involves looking at ways to upgrade and preserve the existing aircraft, assessing what platforms might be available on the market today, or designing a new close air support airplane. There have been many advocates for the A-10 among lawmakers who have publicly questioned the prior Air Force strategy to retire the aircraft. Last year, Senator Kelly Ayotte and Senator John McCain have been among some of the most vocal supporters of the A-10. On several previous occasions, Ayotte has challenged the Air Force decision to retire the plane. The A-10 has saved many American lives, and Senator Ayotte is concerned that the Air Force might prematurely eliminate the A-10 before there is a replacement aircraft, creating a dangerous close air support capability gap that could put our troops at risk, an Ayotte official said last year. McCain, chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, welcomed the news that the A-10 might remain longer than the Air Force had planned. I welcome reports that the Air Force has decided to keep the A-10 aircraft flying through the fiscal year 2017, ensuring our troops have the vital close air support they need for missions around the world. Today, the A-10 fleet is playing an indispensable role in the fight against ISIL in Iraq and assisting NATO's efforts to deter Russian aggression in Eastern Europe, McCain said in a statement last year.